This is uh, Professor Vijayalakshmi Singh. Uh, I'm faculty in the HRM area, and I'm also the admissions chairperson at IIT Ghaziabad. Today, uh, we are here right now uh, for the webinar, which is uh, on the DCP program. And uh, the agenda, as we had mailed you also, is about uh, you know, uh, the updated calendar. And uh, of course, we'll be also talking about its implications, um, you know, on other things, for example, placements and internships. And um, we will be also talking about the experiences of DCP alums. And we'll be handling, you know, taking your questions uh, in the end. So with this, uh, I would also like to next, uh, you know, introduce my uh, panelists for the day. And we have uh, with us uh, Professor Rajnanda Patnayak. He is Dean Academics at Time to Gazebar. We also have uh, Professor Bahid. He is Dean at IMT Dubai. We have Professor, uh, I think Professor uh, Shah is not yet here in case she joins. So I'm just uh, still introducing her, Professor Narani Shah. She's PGDM chairperson at IMT Ghazabad. We also have Professor Geeta Bajaj. She's PGDM and DCP chairperson at IMT Dubai. We have with us also Ms. Renu Mishra. She is placement head at IMT Ghazabad. We have Ms. Seema Mitra, who is manager corporate relations and handles internships and placements at IMT Dubai. We also have our alums with us. And uh, we have the DCP alums. And we have Mr. Akhil Sundar. He's a sales coach and operations lead at Google. He's an alumnus of 2018 batch. We also have Ms. Preksha Tyagi. She's assistant manager with Barclays. She's alumnus of uh, 2018 batch. We have Raju. He's consultant with Zanov and he's an alumnus of 2019 batch. We also have Mr. Ashutosh Kumar with us. Um, he's the CRM and analytics manager at Iowa 2019 batch. We have Ms. Gayatri Pandey. She is assistant manager retail marketing with Troy Trams. Um, and she is alumna of 2018 batch. We have Mr. Praveen Jain with us. He is business analyst at noon.com and he's 2020 batch pass out. And we also have Mr. Siddharth Sharma. He is revenue management officer with Fly Dubai and uh, he is 2019 batch. So uh, these are our panelists and uh, I would like to begin by uh, inviting um, Professor Patnayak uh, to, uh, uh, you know, um, address uh, uh, the students uh, with the latest changes that uh, we have had in terms of updating the calendar. Um, over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lakshmi. Uh, <coughs> what, uh, what gives me the pleasure is uh, we are still seeing the numbers increasing of the participants. Yes. We are going to seven now, and it's going to go more, uh, so which uh, is a good sign. Uh, what I also like about this webinar is this webinar is uh, actually full of uh, our DCP alumni. So uh, students are going to hear from the ones who have experienced it and have gone out to do things. Okay, so that's that's uh, a very good thing because we guys are boring as academicians. Okay, but. Still, we have to hold the backbone right. So um, I think there have been many questions from the students regarding the academic calendar and the way the program is going to pan out. Okay. Now, um, let me start from the program itself. The program architecture is going to be extremely similar with our full-time program. PGDM full-time is going to be very similar to what PGDM DCP. Uh, with the only exception that uh, one additional course they will be doing, uh, that is the UAE immersion, that is going to be in UAE. Am I right, Geeta? So just correct me if I'm just going wrong somewhere, all right? Yes. Okay. So uh, now uh, looking at the program, uh, what we have done to the program structure is we have made the program flexible, but at the same time, not compromised on the highlights of the program, which is kind of the strength of the program. One of the strength of the program has been to give in core electives right before the students go for their internship, which actually prepares them a lot better when they uh, handle the internship, uh, you know, or they, uh, it's an on the job training and they do that. They contribute a lot better than our competitors. 
So that's a great thing that we uh, experienced. We used it as an experiment earlier. It worked. We are continuing with that. There are certain uh, uh, workshop programs like entrepreneurship, new venture, design thinking, innovation, emerging technologies, and that's a lab. These are all lab workshop oriented courses, which are going to help them in building a personality and building a thinking so that they can actually do better in their placement. So this is very uh, skill oriented kind of a thing that we are doing it between terms of the first year itself. In the second year, students will have to accumulate credits uh, in terms of specialization elective. And in term six, which is the last term, they also have the opportunity to do some uh, liberal uh, arts kind of courses. Okay. So these are the things that are the highlights of uh, the program. Although uh, we have a field-based work, which is on an SSR project, we retain that. And what is happening in this whole program is uh, the flexibility and the resilience of the program is making the student decide which career path they can choose. It's not straightjacketing them into something which is a, you know, a kind of a program which is kind of being followed. And uh, it's, it's something like this. The student realizes what works for them and chooses the program and chooses the electives. Okay. So now coming to the academic calendar, Academic calendar earlier, what we gave, uh, then the AICT norms came up that we cannot start our program before 1st of August. So we had to defer that to 1st of August. But uh, what is happening in uh, all the terms is that we are retaining more or less the term weeks, the duration of the term. So uh, maybe try to cut down a little bit on uh, like uh, additional holidays because we are starting from August 1st. So let me read it out for you guys for your convenience. The registration is going to be on 1st of August. We're keeping it the same. We're not changing anything on that. The orientation itself will start on 2nd of August. That whole day will be an orientation, followed by foundation from 3rd to 14th August. It will be the foundation term. In the foundation term, a lot of things will be actually taught so that you can come to speed and uh, perform in term one itself. Okay. The term one starts on 17th of August, and it'll go on till about 31st of October, including the exam. Term two starts after that. That is uh, going to be on 2nd of November to 15th of January, 2021. After that, students will have to report to Dubai by 17th, between 17th and 19th of January. So by the time you go to Dubai, and will, there will be a very quick two days, three days induction program at Dubai. Okay. Then the term three starts at Dubai. Now, the, in the term three, the classes would start from 24th of January and will go on all the way till 8th of April, 2021. After 8th of April, they will, after 9th of April, from 9th of April, uh, let me correct it, from 9th of April to 8th of July, is the time for their internship. So it's about eight to 10 weeks of internship they will be doing in Dubai. There'll be some flexibility in, the, in uh, the internship term from the Dubai side, depending on what the internship is. Then term four starts in Dubai. It will be from 11th of July to 16th of September, 2021. Sorry, term four starts from uh, 11th of July to 16th of September, 2021. And then term five starts, that, that'll also be a time to Dubai. It'll start from 19th of September to 18th of November, 2021. Now, please understand this. The placement at IMT Ghaziabad would happen in the last week of November. It'll start from the last week of November. So by 18th of November, if you're going to finish the term five in IMT Dubai, so that is the time you should immediately plan to travel to IMT Ghaziabad and join, which means that not a single day of placement you'll be missing. Okay, so no placement days or opportunities will be missed by any student of DC. Now, uh, once you come back in the, in the final week, in the last week of November in Ghaziabad, you'll actually be working on your SSR project. And there will be one lab course that you'll also be doing along the SSR project. So this SSR project and uh, this uh, other workshop 
will start from 21st of November and it will go on till 31st of December. Now, term six, which is the uh, last term, that will start at IMT Ghaziabad from 3rd of January and it will go on all the way from all the way till 4th of March 2022. So, uh, we expect uh, during the first week of March or maybe mid of March to have the convocation done. And uh, the term six is going to get over much before that. So we have a clear uh, 10 to 15 days for our results and certificates and other formalities to be done. So this is what the uh, academic calendar is. And when we create an academic calendar, we stick to it unless and until government gives us a new advisory. Okay. So as of now, uh, AICT has given us the advisory that we can start from August 1st. Based on that, this is the academic calendar that we have frozen. Now, uh, 90 percent, 99 percent, it's going to be the same unless and until government comes with a new advisory, it's going to be the same. But the highlight of this calendar that I have to tell you, this is uh, internship and placement. Internship, you have the opportunity at Dubai. But if any student wants internship in Ghaziabad, they have to tell very clearly, much earlier, by term one, that they are interested to have the internship in Ghaziabad so that the placement team works for it. OK, so uh, it's, it's not like this. You choose Ghaziabad, you take up an internship, and then you decide you're going to go to Dubai. You have to choose. Either you do it here or you do it at Dubai, the internship. For the final placements, not a single student will be missing any opportunity. So that's a given. So these are the highlights of uh, the academic calendar. Vijay Lakshmi? Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And um, uh, with this, of course, uh, I think we can uh, start taking the queries uh, unless uh, uh, because there are a lot of queries. So uh, what do you suggest? Or should I, you know, um, or maybe I can, you know, we I can think talk we should, about. Uh, we, should, we should allow our uh, panelists, of course, our of panelists course. to speak further because a yeah, lot of because... those questions get answered. But yeah, answered because uh, I think I have uh, more than 20 questions already. So uh, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so with this, uh, uh, you know, I'd, I'd uh, next then invite our alums, uh, you know, before losing any time to, um, you know, speak about the experiences. So hence, I would like to invite, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Akhil, uh, you know, uh, in, in brief, of course, because, uh, you know, uh, we have less time and we have many queries from the students. I've got more than 20 queries already. And, uh, and, and hence, uh, what is what has been your experience as a you know a DCP student and uh, yeah would you like to tell our upcoming DCP batch? Actually, I hope I'm audible. Yes. That, yes, you are. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Uh, I think first off, thanks for having us. Uh, very kind of you to to invite us on this conversation and be able to have a conversation. And there's many prospective uh, students for the batch as possible. And I think Dr. Rajnandan is being very humble when he's saying that academicians are boring and there's not much to, to learn from them. Uh, in my time at, at IMT, I think there was so much that I learned from, uh, from the faculty. And it was, it, I think one thing that we need to look at differently from any past experience in terms of education is in our undergraduation, academicians, our teachers are, are purely that, right? We just look at them as, hey, professors, uh, and then we walk out to students. But uh, I think the biggest takeaway for me from this program was that uh, I, you can find great mentors in academicians and in professors within uh, within our university and even outside of of, of the of the realm of IMT itself. Uh, for example, Dr. Dr. Geeta, who who I have con consistent conversations with, is someone who I looked up to in terms of ensuring that hey, I build a brand in in the right sense and I'm able to communicate and work towards uh, a certain way of. Of, of carrying myself even after B school. So I found that uh, really useful. That's one piece in terms of finding great mentors uh, within the university. Uh, the second piece I think is more around leveraging brand IMT. Uh, whether it is doing a two year course at Ghaziabad, uh, spending time in Dubai, coming back, at the end of the day, we're all under the IMT brand. And I think that has tremendous value across because I, I can vouch for it in that there are managers at Google who are from IMT. There are uh, there are people who are still coming to Google from from IMT and across the, the top tech space at least. 
uh, the benefit there is now that you have pedigree and this is an institute that's been around for such a long time uh, for us to have that conversation within companies is much easier for example Preksha and Barclays has that conversation and has a few few other people who who work who have studied at AMT at some point in time in the past. So pedigree is a huge benefit here. I'm sure that applies to a lot of universities as well, a lot of B schools. But one that we can definitely leverage, especially in 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 the space that that we sort of excel at. Um, I think those are those are two things that I definitely wanted to share uh, as as prospective students coming into this batch. And I'm happy to take questions also at the end towards the end of it if we do get some time. But I'll keep it brief for now and I'll hand it back to uh, Sujay Lakshmi if there's anything else. Sure, sure. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Rakhil. And yes, uh, uh, you know, the, as you told, among other, other things, the IMT brand, the pedigree, the faculty support, the, inter, the industry interactions all have really played a, a, you know, a, a, a very important role um, into, uh, you know, wherever you are currently doing very well. Um, and uh, yes, uh, with that, I would also next like to invite Ms. Preksha. Uh, you're there? Hi, ma'am. Am I audible? Hi. Hi, Ms. Preksha. Uh, would you also like to, you know, uh, tell our upcoming DCP batch about your experience as, uh, you know, a DCP, uh, you know, candidate and, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, ma'am. I think uh, it's such a wonderful experience for me to be able to share my experience with the upcoming batch because I know that there are a lot of questions at this point in time and as alums if we can ease out those apprehensions for them uh, it feels great you know it sort of feels like we're giving back to our alma mater uh, there is so much that i'd like to reiterate from you know what akhil was saying uh, my experience in dubai the first year was so eventful it didn't feel like a year it felt like much longer because I think compared to uh, when you're in a college in India, the out of college opportunities are much more. Uh, we had something called JITEX where we worked for eight days. I mean, how many times do you get an opportunity to actually go out and work while studying in India? Or even if you do, it's sort of frowned upon, right? But there it's great, you know, we were working with all of these students from different colleges, different nationalities, and that's as real as it gets, right? It's a real experience. You're going out there, you're exhibitors, you're selling stuff. So I think that opportunity was wonderful. And then coming to, you know, uh, the second point, the mentors that we had. Uh, a lot of people keep asking me, reaching out on LinkedIn or through common contacts, etc. So what's the difference between IMT Ghazabad full time? What's the difference between uh, DCP? In terms of the quality of education you're getting, in terms of the faculty you're getting, there is absolutely no difference. You very much get the IMT Ghazabad experience. So that, again, has, you know, uh, Akhil gave a very interesting example where he was talking about how uh, I can probably reach out to people who are from IMT in Barclays, and that has actually happened. So this year, interestingly, what happened in Barclays was, uh, for us being an analytics field, uh, there were a lot of uh, people in the grad batch coming in from, you know, majors in statistics, majors in economics. This year, Barclays decided to give preference to IMT Ghazabad and reach out here first. And I was talking to my director and I, I was asking him uh, what led to that decision. And he was saying, you know, we just felt like you people take the grind just, better. And that's the IMT experience, you know. It's, yeah, just a second. Uh, is it just yeah. me or uh, are we having some audio issues? Yeah, just a second, just a second. Is, I'll, I'll, is, it just, uh, yeah, is it just me or everyone is having those audio issues? Yeah, I think uh, there is some issue and uh, just a second. Some uh, audio issue there. Uh, okay, Preksha, huh. sorry, uh, I think we have to correct this. Okay, Sir, before, it is coming yeah. at even like at your end also. It's the same with everyone, I guess. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just uh, check with Mr. Inder. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. There's some uh, issue here. going to is it a storm coming out here it seems here locally
Okay, many students say audio is clear for them. So can we start in that case? Did you like me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, sorry, Miss Peksha, for the interruption, but uh, there was some, uh, you know, audio related, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, disruption in between. And hence, uh, I thought so. Yeah, you were uh, you would uh, like to you know um, add a last point or wrapping point or like uh, you know because I'm sorry for the interruption. You were in a very good flow of uh, you know conversation. I remember. Yeah, that's talking about you know how this entire Ahmedabad experience and then on top of that the Dubai experience. What it led to was that you know you don't come out of the course having learned every single definition in every single course uh, the way we were taught at imt was that you integrate all of these uh, and i was hearing from the academic calendar how much more flexible it's become uh, now even compared to our time so i think people are just going to come out of it being able to solve complex problems being able to apply themselves better and i think uh, that's something that always stands out wherever imt students go so yeah, that's about it. Would love to uh, hear what other queries uh, prospective students have now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Ms. Peksha, for you know sharing the experience. Um, and uh, I would now uh, next also invite uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Pradvi Raju. Uh, would you like to also add? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, hi everyone. So first of all, I like to thank IMT team for inviting me. So we're part of this forum. And so to give a summary of my experience in DCP, uh, it has been overall a very, very uh, great experience. And uh, the best part of the DCP is we are only just 150 people. And all of, at, by the end of two years, we become a one huge family. All 150 people, we everyone knows each other and everyone is part of one community. And also uh, a few more things i like to add is, uh, one thing DCP offers better than uh, I feel than IMT full time is that the faculty that we get, uh, everyone has international experience and guest faculty also. We we got Mr. Delina from New York University, and also uh, still I still remember manager uh, manager class from Kitama. I still remember the teachings from the class when I was walking to a presentation. It's a, such a great class. That's one class I would remember for life. So, uh, and also uh, one of the best parts studying Dubai is you get to learn a lot from outside. You go out, you talk to people, the, and you do STP, and you can do a in form of job. You can do a sales job, uh, which many few, very very few people in India will have will have that kind of experience. I think this will be a great advantage for people who are especially seeking careers in sales. And also, uh, internship experience, you get to work with uh, people around the world in your internship. Uh, I personally work with people from Europe and Africa. That has been such a great experience. And uh, overall, uh, I feel DCP offers much, much more uh, than uh, what full time program does in Gajabad. So, this is what I tell uh, any junior to approach me and contact me. Uh, one uh, question I get is, do DCP uh, students have different advantage than IMT uh, full time students at the placement? But I feel that uh, you are only disadvantage only when you feel it. I think you always have to go ahead and explain what you gain from the Dubai program when you one year student in Dubai. And at the end of the day, you will always be better experienced than people in full time just because of your international exposure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pradvi. Thank you uh, so much for sharing your experiences. Um, yeah, we have, uh, you know, a lot of uh, alums today and uh, I would also, uh, without wasting any further time, quickly invite, uh, you know, uh, Ms. Uh, Gayatri. You're here? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to uh, talk about your experience, for example? You can talk about your academic experience or any other experience that you would like to share. You know, as a DCP student, uh, you know, uh, how it has given you, uh, you know, the advantage and what are the possibilities uh, that you uh, really excel at. Yes. Okay. So, why do we do MBA? The very reason we do MBA is to learn management. It is far, so earning the degree in marketing, finance, HR, or operations is just a part of it. 
And one advice that I would want to give to all these students is you are working with future managers. As Akhil and Preksha rightly mentioned, pedigree helps, you know, to help, help you get connected to people and all that. It's very helpful. So invest your time in your peers. Go, go out, network with them. During my uh, course in DCP, I was active in cultural committee. I was also going out, interacting with people, kind of networking. You uh, now you have uh, Toastmasters in IMT as well, which is a very good, uh, which is a very good platform to connect with pe more people and invest time in them. Jitex is a very good opportunity because it helps you develop on your soft skills, and also you meet a lot of people. That, uh, like during my time, the people I had met and connected, I'm still in touch with them, and they helped me during in my job as well. I have met with them, I have met them and connected certain projects which I got for my brand and you know further moving on. So, so all these things that we get in Dubai are very helpful. We don't get this exposure in Gazaba. Gazaba is a very different uh, uh, area and culture, and all the learnings that you'll have in Dubai and all the opportunities that you get, just try and capitalize. Studies are important. You need to score decent marks uh, for your hygiene factor. But make sure that you are going out, you are interacting, you are making the best out of it. So, and it also helps you develop in time management, develop resilience, and all those. Like Akhil, I know Akhil was one of the persons who was very much active in sports and all this stuff. And you know, you get to bond, you get to work in team. You sometimes you lead the teams as well, so you know how to manage the team as well as be a part of team. So, teamwork, leadership, all these you grow on. Focus on it, build on it, work on it. That's what I would want to say to everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, now, you know, Ms. Gatri very well said that yes, uh, academics, of course, that has to be that is there, but that's a hygiene factor. And what happens beyond the classroom is, uh, you know, actually creating uh, impact. And in Dubai, especially with much more networking and uh, you know, much more opportunities, it just is uh, you know icing on the cake. Okay, so with that, we uh, next move on um, to uh, Mr. Siddharth. Would you also like to share your experience? Um, yes. Yeah, Thank yeah. So, so what, has, what, what has been, you know, uh, what kept you on edge and how did you excel? Yes. So, yeah, I want to talk about a bunch of things, but I think Gayatri uh, and Akhil and uh, Preksha have pretty much summed up what I wanted to speak about. Um, yes, the, 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 the alums are there. Yes, there's a huge network of people you can tap onto, not just before, not just during the MBA, but even after, like even right now, I'm reaching out to different people from IMT and sort of uh, figuring out work things that we that we usually go on and off. Um, as and as like I was just going through the participants and the questions that people have, and as and as prospective students, I mean, we were at their place a couple of years ago or four years ago, and I totally get the concerns that they have. I totally get what they're trying to ask and 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 what position are they at. Um, but speaking from my personal experience, now that I've lived through those two years of MBA and have started a career as well, um, when I look back, I can categorically say that um, the program was of huge benefit to me. Um, not just the, I mean, the Dubai experience was an integral part of the program. And I mean, right now I'm working in Dubai. So the Dubai experience, the academics, the mentors, the professors, I mean, I can just categorically say and recommend it to anyone that, you know, if you're at the edge of uh, choosing a program, um, with my benefit of hindsight, I can definitely say that um, it's going to help you out. It's going to do good things for you, you know, and 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 just be positive and and let's see. I think it will be good for everyone. And yeah, if there's any Thank of your questions, you can take them. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Siddharth. Thank you for your, uh, you know, for your insights and inputs. Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, two more um, alums and uh, uh, Mr. Ashutosh. Hello. Uh, are you guys able to hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. please. So for me, yeah. 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 For me, I was working in an IT organization, Infosys, and the job was going good over there. So I wanted to learn something, and that's why I, I left my job. It was not like I didn't like IT. So what happened in MBA in first year? I got to know. Uh, f first of all, the most important thing that I knew uh, that I got to experience was uh, the multicultural environment over here. So, for example, the faculties also are from different nationalities. So they have a perception. We Indians always think that our maths uh, is really strong. We are very good in analytics. But when it comes to presentation, we are not that good, right? And that's what we realized when the faculties from different colleges, they told us that you guys are exceptional when it, when it comes to 
uh, doing the work, but you're not uh, that good when you're when it comes to expressing it. So these kind of small, small, minute uh, uh, things actually helped us here. Yeah? Uh, one thing which I would like to say is I, I worked in Jitex actually, and I actually interacted with more than 30 nationalities. And then you get to know about them. You get to know about how, what is their purchasing behavior? Uh, are they discount driven? Those kind of things. And then when you do your internship, uh, you also work with those people. Like you work with, like in my company, we had 21 nationalities. So all the perception, all the things about different nationalities were there. And then, uh, I mean, this kind of helped me to kind of get over it. And now, uh, like, uh, and uh, right now also I'm, I'm working in Dubai. And this experience kind of helped me in getting a job in Dubai and uh, like excelling here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ashutosh. Last but not the least, Mr. Praveen. Yes. Hi, uh, are you able to hear me? Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to take your bites also. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, being from the batch of 2020, I feel I am the most closest uh, to these guys uh, over here. Uh, and I, I am happy that uh, everyone invited you. Uh, nice seeing you all. Uh, so everybody has been speaking, uh, like everybody has summed up the whole DCP experience, which I can uh, barely say anything. But uh, I wanted to say something which is on the flip side, saying that what's the academic or classroom ex experience that you actually get in Dubai? It's not only this beyond things, so many things which uh, Gayatri, Ashutosh, or uh, Prudvi has all pointed out. I wanted to say, uh, highlight a few things that happens actually inside the course and inside the classroom that you can be benefited out of it. Uh, like uh, most of you students would be knowing that uh, MBA is not like your in undergrad or an engineering course where at the end of semester you just read a night before and you clear through your exams and do it. It is something that happens over the uh, whole the whole term. Your whole component is divided from uh, your uh, class participation to your projects to your case studies. Then comes your end, end exam, which is a very small percentage. So you have to be alive throughout your whole term uh, to make sure that uh, you are you are putting everything in there. Uh, so in, in, where, it, where it comes in with the DCP, uh, every course which I have read has some kind of immersion with international business or some um, cross-cultural or mul uh, multicultural aspect to it. Now, to cite out a few examples, uh, I, was, uh, I was asked to do a uh, project with Virgin Mobile here. I, I went uh, up with, uh, I connected with Virgin Mobile team uh, in Middle East with the company. I did some projects with them. Uh, then upon out of our own curiosity, since we are in Dubai and everybody here is uh, like doing, uh, looking at the currency exchange rates that's going on, we took up that as a project and uh, we saw how the currency is fluctuating and we did that as an economics project on our own. So these are some kind of projects which out of curiosity we were asked to do it and uh, I believe that kind of experience you will not face when you're in Ga Ghaziabad in like two years when you're studying, you don't uh, do with multicultural or multi-currency kind of aspect. Uh, so all that uh, basic stuff you uh, we got to do here and now it's like inbound within us like where it's not like something new for us it's like we have grown over that that's that's how uh, the experience has been uh, we uh, over the course we went on various industrial visits like uh, we visited so many companies and we got to know their experience and when i did my internship i i was doing in a very good uh, good uh, company lanma group which is a very huge uh, uh, retail and I like Ashutur Fred. I, I intra uh, here, same here again, like 20 30 nationalities of people been interacting and now again being working with them. So, the whole of experience, uh, uh, that I mean, there is no words to it. I mean, that's what I would say. That's how it has helped me a lot. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Praveen, uh, you know, for sharing your experiences. And uh, definitely, as you rightly you know, pointed out, you are the 2020 pass out batch. And, uh, you know, you're addressing the, in, you know, 2020 incoming batch. So hence, uh, it's, uh, I hope, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are going to, you know, get a lot of, uh, you know, insights from you and, uh, you know, make uh, the correct decision. And yes, with this, I would like to, uh, you know, then move on to the question and answers uh, section as uh, we have a lot of queries. So uh, let's uh, begin. Uh, is it okay, sir? Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um, with this, I would like to, you know, uh, coming to you, sir, because, uh, you know, let's, um, I'm just going by, uh, you know, um, as the questions have come. 
So um, the first question is uh, regarding clarity on, you know, what will be the hybrid model, you know, the integration of online and offline classes on campus, how will it look like? And, uh, you know, what is the possibility that we are going to have hybrid? See, uh, COVID has taught one thing. I mean, it's not only IMT, it's across uh, the country and the world. Uh, imagine uh, institutions like Harvard Business School, which is so case heavy, which is like 100%, every course is run through cases. They have to go online literally on a weekend. So by Friday, they were doing it in person class, by Monday, they're doing it online. So it's something like everybody was cramming to go online. So, uh, what COVID has taught us is how we should look at our academics and the delivery mechanism. There are three models that primarily were thrown up. We always love the model of in-person class. And uh, please uh, let, it not, let us not confuse in-person class with just lectures. There are so many things that actually happens in in-person class. Okay. It's a very participant-centered learning class, and in-person class is a very different environment that in an MBA college we actually see. Now, the first model is in-person class. That was the traditional model. Now, because of COVID, we have to go online. So uh, what a lot of uh, faculty across the world did was they took their in-person class and went online. So it didn't work. Many of the times they failed. Many of the magics they created in class didn't happen. But slowly they started learning. Okay. So now the situation is we have to go online. Now, once we go online, then it gives us the confidence to have a hybrid model. A hybrid model is much easier because a part of the class is going to be online and a part of the class is going to be in the class. So let me tell you how it actually pans out. It is almost like a studio where we have cameras and microphones and faculty and some students in the class. And those students will be decided on a roster basis who is going to come for those classes. So let us say I have a class, the usual class size, if I say it's 60, for a hybrid model, we may have 30 or less, or maybe 20 students in the class. And the class happens like an in-person class. But the only difference is the people watching behind electronically will also be able to participate in this hybrid model class. So if they have a question, they can ask those questions electronically and witness a full budget class in a synchronous mode happening. That's a hybrid class. Okay. So the on model, um, online model, the hybrid model, and the in-person model. This year we have to be prepared for all. It's a nightmare for the faculty. They have to work double time. But this is something that Corona is throwing at us, and we have to stand up and fight that. Okay, we don't want to make any compromises on the learning outcomes. We don't want to make any compromises or make the course uh, content light. We don't want to do that. So having everything that we were doing in in-person class and able to make it happen on the online class is a challenge, and we are ready to prepare for it. Now that is that is uh, that is what this uh, delivery mechanism is. Now, when it comes to the other part, the other supporting materials such as books cases, everything is going to be go online. So a lot of that you would see now happening online. So maybe if I see, if I talk about a book, maybe it's going to be an e-book or a smart book, much more than a physical book. Libraries, libraries don't want to lend out books. And it's not safe, even if you take a book back and try to sanitize it, it's just not possible. You cannot sanitize every page. So these are the things that Corona has actually thrown at us as a challenge, and we're ready to Please. Okay. So uh, there are many things that are going to happen, which a lot of our students have not experienced earlier. But this is an experience which is going to live with them throughout the lifetime. And trust me, it's going to make them better people. I have a question. Like, uh, since we have we will be in Ghaziabad for two months, first two months, obviously we'll be engaging in further cultural activities other than the studies, right? 
so since like earlier it used to be an entire year like we are part of the activities groups and everything for an entire year and that, that makes like logical yeah you are part of this society or whatever for the entire year. but now since we'll be here for just the first two terms and then the remaining term we'll be spending in dubai so how does that affect our cultural performance and everything Okay, uh, this is Shikha, right? This is Shikha. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just going, uh, just give me one second, sir. Yes. Um, yeah, is, this was Shikha, right? Yeah, this is Shikha. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking your question, but I would request the other participants uh, to, you know, uh, write their questions. I'm going to take all the questions one by one, okay? okay. Because I was just going to read out the next question, but I'm taking yours, okay? But this is for the rest of the session. Please write your queries yes. and we'll be taking it. Sure. Yeah? Yes, sure. yes sir, back to you. Uh, Shikha, it's something like this. Earlier, what was happening is, and uh, I have uh, my alums here to, you know, vouch for me. Uh, the orientation was happening here, the foundation, and then they would go and do some kind of an induction in Dubai. Okay, so that was happening, and then the term one, two, three, and whatever the whole first year was happening in Dubai. So what was happening is, in the first year, they were never a part of any committee or clubs here. Because the first year, the whole of first year, they were not here. Now what we intend to do is, by the term one, we want everyone, everyone, that includes PCP students, to be a part of the club, whichever club they wish to be in. Now, after two terms, when you go out, you are still connected electronically with whatever is happening in the club, which was not happening earlier. So this is a better way of assimilating our DS DCP students into our main curriculum. So, frankly speaking, what you were not getting earlier, you'll be getting a lot more now. And surely we are not stopping you from at Dubai to do cultural activities and invite and the Gazebad students to be a part of that electronically and do a live streaming. Okay, so that way it's going to assimilate both the you know campuses a lot better. Mm -hmm. So we have thought it through, and the plan is on. So don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Shikha. And uh, now the next question is, uh, you know, again, I think back, uh, back to you, sir. There are going to be a lot of questions. I think Professor Shah has not joined, so uh, I'll take your help again. So uh, this is regarding uh, Coursera. Uh, you know, there has been a request that I think uh, you know before also we have communicated that, and I think they know that regarding the course, uh, Coursera courses. So yes, uh, you know, asking can it be shared with them uh, in advance so that they can use this time for you know preparing. So uh, it will be, it will okay. be. The only okay. thing is that it requires a certain kind of uh, housekeeping from our side. The typical housekeeping that is required is uh, the student is supposed to be having an email ID from IMT. Yeah. So that's the basic housekeeping that we have to take care. Coursera courses are going to be uh, given, and uh, many many of those courses will be suggested, in fact, by the areas, by the PGP office and the area. Okay. So that's that's going to happen. You'll you'll receive uh, you know all those uh, you know notifications. You'll receive all those communications regarding which course to do. Which course we are suggesting, and so on and so forth. Okay, yeah, including uh, how you're going to go on board, everything. Yes, that will happen. Thank you, thank you, sir. We need to make the unique student IDs for that. I think that's the part of the Coursera's, uh, you know, terms and. And that will happen, and that will happen somewhere in July. So maybe about second week, kind of July, it will start happening. Okay, before they come, it will. They ha will have enough opportunities to do enough courses. Okay. okay. So that's that's again an optional thing for them to do. And uh, another question um, regarding the SSR course. So, um, you know, uh, uh, it has been asked that um, because from 21st November to 30, uh, you know, uh, for about a month, it is mentioned in the, in the uh, you know, architecture. So is it going to be solely, you know, that month is solely going to be focused on SSR? And, you know, they're not very clear about SSR. And so can you okay. please? So SSR is a project that they do. It's a sustainability and social responsibility project where the, uh, the, the uh, softer side and more sustainable side of the student is actually being uh, explored. Okay, so it's a field project where the student will have to go and take up a field project and do a project around it. So the, the field project could be anything from livelihood 
anything from uh, sanitary uh, sanitation hygiene to anything i mean these are the things that actually concerns the society and they do project on that okay so they what they do is they and they bring their business understanding in solving social problems okay now this one one month a little more than one month they are going to do ssr and they are also going to do one lab workshop kind of a course okay which is a non credit course so they're going to do this complete month so which is enough work for them they should not complain that you have killed us but there is enough work for them to do in that one month okay so yeah, one month a little previous. more than that yeah. yes yeah and yeah. Uh, they, they, there would be one orientation on uh, you know this how to face interviews and those kind of things you know, group discussions and that is going to workshop. be a kind of an yes. workshop workshop, workshop. Okay. workshop that is also yeah. going to happen around that okay yes okay okay uh, another request because i think earlier also we have communicated uh, about the online and the e materials uh, that is going to be shared so you know they are requesting that if uh, you know it can be shared early so that they can you make use of the time uh, before of course the orientation and all that so yes. uh, so like i said uh, the basic hygiene is uh, we have to have the email ids laid out so which means that the process has to be complete so the admission process is still not complete so that's that's we are waiting for that that's the moment that gets over, we are, we are fine with it. Okay. 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 And uh, yeah, um, now uh, two more questions to you, sir. Okay. One is regarding committees. It has been asked because, uh, you know, um, they are saying that since they. Yeah, I missed that. Students I missed that. Committees, students committees. Okay. Students okay. committees. Committees. So, okay. uh, so the query is that, uh, you know, they have it, they're having, they are having an understanding because full one year they are not. Uh, you know, at a go, uh, you know, spending on the campus. So, uh, you know, at a stretch, two semesters only. And what about the student committees and, you know, how, you know, uh, effective it will be and whether there will be any bridge or coordination between the student committees of both the campuses. So, uh, yeah. I think yeah. I covered this a little earlier. I reiterate, both the campuses are going to work much closer on student committees and their activity. Earlier, the first year, they were not a part of this. Now, right from day one, they're going to be a part of this. So it's almost like you make friends, go out, and it's again a homecoming. It's not like uh, you, you forget the first year. No, it's not like that. It's going to be a much more deeper assimilated program. And definitely coordination is expected from the students from both sides. Yeah. Meanwhile, sure that's that's going to there, yeah. And meanwhile, when they're there, I think virtually the students committees will have to, you know, uh, in, and I don't see a reason why in today's uh, social media world, why they'll be disconnected. They're going to keep working together. So the only thing that will disconnect them is perhaps laziness or lethargy. Otherwise, if they have the energy in them, Absolutely. it's a welcome. Absolutely. It's a welcome. Okay. Last question, sir, to you. Uh, this is regarding, uh, you know, uh, uh, a concern. Uh, you know, that if there is a change from the AICTE regarding guidelines, okay, because of the COVID, now then uh, are we again then going to make a change in the schedule and the calendar or are we going to switch to online mode? So let me reiterate a few things that I've said earlier. Yeah. COVID has taught, taught us something. COVID has taught us to be flexible. Okay, that's one. Whatever the AICT gives us, we have to follow those guidelines. Now, uh, it is highly unlikely that this online classes are going to change. Highly unlikely. Because the way the situation is, the way the cases are rising, the way the ICMR and uh, WHO norms are going to be for social distancing and others, it is highly likely that it's going to be online. When I say highly likely, it's perhaps as close to 100%. Okay. Now, uh, let's think about this. If the city tomorrow comes and says, no, you cannot have your classes from August 1st. We are innovative enough to figure out a way without making a compromise on how the course is going to pass. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do yeah. it. But okay. at the same time, let me tell this. There is no reason why AICT should change this now, because they have told very clearly, I mean, rather indicated very clearly, that it's going to be online. And some of the institutions like IMB have clearly said in the open market, saying that uh, their whole of the first year will be going to be online. So if, if there are many institutions doing that, because they understand the reality 
and i think asit will also understand the reality and give us very quickly that it's going to be online complete but we are prepared for every eventuality okay so if it is online we'll do it online if it is hybrid we are ready for it if yes. it is in person we have always been doing that so that's not a problem so the candidates shouldn't be worried whatever of course we'll have to follow the government mandates and uh, we are prepared and we'll be like every other you know college as of now we are not changing the dates of the calendar even by a single day okay we are standing by it. yes fine fine now over you know i'll now it's um, you know coming to placements now section i think you know there are obviously couple of queries regarding placements uh, uh, section uh, miss renu yeah and and uh, yeah and miss seema both of you uh, so uh, this question is regarding for example um, you know people are asking a uh, couple of them they have asked the same question and this is so about the companies which will come before the placement week you know starts in gaziabad so will imt gaziabad wait for imt dcp students and what will happen in the pre placement you know the day zero what about those opportunities uh, and will the dcp students be losing out so okay as 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 professor patnaik said uh, that none of the dcp students will lose out on any opportunity and we stand by that so it is the responsibility of the placement office to how manage the placement week accordingly and when we say that uh, they will not lose out they will not lose out that's it okay okay so before gaziabad you know even the placement week it will be taken absolutely. care of absolutely absolutely okay 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 and uh, um, okay so um, there's also another questions uh, you know regarding the uh, summer internship uh, so uh, miss uh, seema and miss renu both uh, you know you can give your comments so um, the concern is that given the covid situation it's likely that the uae market uh, you know is not going to be great now how it will affect uh, the internships and the placements and will there be you know uh, won't be there a preference for the localites there so you know uh, so these are the concerns they are having uh, yes i would like to go first in this inter uh, yeah summer internship see uh, by the time they will be taking the summer internship it will be in april okay by the time the situation will be changing certainly it will be changing and the situation how is it in india it is similar here also the market will Certainly not be totally at standstill. It is. We are still like today. Also, we are finding out some opportunity, and none of our uh, interns are without any internship. Even our MBA batch also, they are getting the internship. And at this COVID situation also, students could get the internship opportunity in the market. Not only in Dubai, even in India, they got the. so uh, opportunity internship opportunity certainly will be there and uh, by april the things will be uh, coming to the better situation what it is now when our present dcp students can do it coming dcp students can certainly be doing it much better okay okay thanks thanks um okay so uh, there's another question uh, will the mode of classes if if the mode of classes will be online then will the students be required to attend classes from home or they'll be uh, required to join the hostel so uh, yes uh, i think uh, uh, professor geeta would you like to uh, you know uh, also because since we haven't yet i've not got a chance to come back to you Jee Lakshmi, but that question is for Gaziabad, right? So I think it would be better answered okay. by Dr. Okay. Patel because they will be joining in Gaziabad, right? And by the time okay. they come to Dubai, most likely it would be that they will okay. come in person. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, back to Professor Patnaik. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so uh, Jee Lakshmi, uh, let me let me just uh, I mean ask uh, I mean rather answer this question with a kind of an explanation. if the classes are going to be online for academics what matters more to me is that students attend that online what is not important for me is are they attending it from the hostel rooms or from the home okay but what i'm more concerned about is they should be having enough bandwidth mm. so that they can handle the uh, video and the audio that is going to happen with the with that mm. particular uh, online class mm. now uh, 
I'm not sure what the norms from ASCT is going to come. If ASCT allows students to come and stay in the hostel, we have to be doubly careful because the social distancing has to be maintained. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the things that we have to, that is, that is more of an administration side, hostel side kind of a thing that they'll have to take care of. But from me as an academician, it is important that the students attend the class. By staying where, either in the hostel or at home, it's the material to me. But for their own safety and mm -hmm. looking at what the ASIC is going to say or the directive that is going to come, mm -hmm. it's going to be more, it's likely that uh, they would always say that if you are doing it in hostel, I mean, any kind of live streaming, you have to take care of the social distancing and all those things within the camp. It is going to be definitely tricky, but uh, we, are, we are gearing up to it. So we, like I said, we are prepared. Uh, to handle all kinds of eventualities that is going to come out of being. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's one that's more. the question one which is question. obvious. Yeah. 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 Geeta, Geeta wants to add on. Yes, please. I just okay. want okay. to add on yeah. the Lakshmi. Sure, that sure. My answer was obviously assuming that by January they'll be able to, mid January they'll be able to travel here, right? I'm, I'm taking yeah. that for a given. But just in case there's any emergency or anything, let me share with you, we are already doing that. So for us over here, for all our other programs, the classes are already happening online. We're doing online exams, uh, everything, all our meetings. The whole institute is right now working. And so Virtually, we're already yeah. in the flow. And so that's not a problem for us. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Thank, right. you. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, 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 Professor Patnaik, yeah, coming back to you, sir. Uh, so uh, there's this question. Uh, for the DCP batch and uh, uh, the PGDM batch here at Ghazabad, uh, is the batch, you know, uh, you know, both the batches, they are going to have classes together or is it going to be separate? Okay, again, uh, my alums are here to watch for me. We don't differentiate. Yeah. We don't differentiate. In the class, I, do, I won't be knowing if the student is from PGDM full-time or PGDM marketing or PGDM finance or PGDM DCP. There's no way for me to know that. Unless and until I actually go back and do some kind of functional homes, kind of, uh, you know, figuring out, you know, knowing him, watching him, you know, the way he walks and talks and everything. <laughs> See, it is, it is something like this. We don't differentiate right from the beginning, right from the beginning. And that is not what we want to do. We assimilate the whole class right from orientation. In term one and two, you'll be mixed within the class. Maybe you'll be DCP students, but you'll be having students along with you who are full time. Uh, you have uh, PGD full time, PGD marketing, PGD finance students. And once you come back, also we don't differentiate. You take electives, and you're part of a class where you have other students as well. Now, in placements, also we don't differentiate. Yeah. Keep a secret record that this is a DCP student. This is not a DCP student. This year, we are going even one step further. The roll numbers that is going to be assigned, there is no way you guys can tell it that this is a DCP roll number. Okay, so no way we don't differentiate at all. So it's in the class. Uh, maybe roll number one would be a DCP student, maybe four would be a DCP student, maybe eight would be a DCP student. Okay, so we have no idea who is who is what in a class. So you're all at the same level. You're expected to perform at the same level. Okay. And uh, because you're at the end of it, buying the same kind of job. So there's not going to be any differentiation from our side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, coming back to uh, the placements, uh, you know, placement heads, uh, there's this, uh, you know, uh, concern about summer internship because uh, the concern is that since uh, they'll be forming, uh, you know, uh, the teams uh, much later and, you know, in January all that it will start. So they'll be getting much less time than, you know, every year, uh, you know, to prepare, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, the process, you know, the process before the placements, actually, the summer placements. So what are going to be the implications and what should they expect and, you know, what will be the, you know, challenges and how they would be overcoming it. So, uh, yes. Uh, Ms. Renu and Ms. Seema uh, about summer placements. Okay, I, I, I like to take it first. Okay, as far as summer placements is concerned, the batch joins in August. Summer placements are scheduled to start for placement process scheduled to start for the first week of October. Uh, August, September is the time which we, and every year also, last year it started in uh, September, so two months time is required for any student to prepare 
or given for any student to prepare in any campus. Similar time is expected to be given to any student here who joins here. And uh, the preparations would start the moment they come on board. Uh, so whether it is offline or online, that preparation or uh, would start from August itself. Uh, as far as, again, working for uh, their resumes and uh, other things are concerned, those are the things. And as far as uh, uh, students who would opt for summer internship in India, uh, they would have to give their preference in August, uh, by August itself, so that we have the numbers. And then the remaining uh, would uh, be going on to uh, Dubai and their placement process, I think Seema would start by January because that's the cycle there. So it is as per the cycle. Yeah, I think yeah, that uh, yeah. concern yeah. is more about yeah. the, you know, the UAE, yeah. the January. Yeah. But I'll just yeah. come back to you, Ms. Seema. Uh, but uh, there's a related question. Uh, and that's why I want to finish it with uh, you, Ms. Renu. Yeah. So because they're asking if they choose to do internship in Gazeba, then will they have similar opportunities for internships as of PGDM full-time students? Yeah. So as, 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 as Professor Patnaik said, we don't differentiate. I don't know. I have a bad size of X. That's it. That would can include DCP, PGDM, finance, marketing, etc. So it's it's a X bad size, uh, which is uh, communicated to the organization. So it would include all the programs. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, coming back to uh, Ms. Seema. Yeah, you would like to also add your uh, comments because the concern about the, you know, uh, they'll be starting from January. So is the time enough and the opportunities for, you know, summer placements? Yeah, there. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to tell, yes, here in Dubai, uh, specifically the all the internship interviews starts happening from one month or two months before, not before that. And as you will be starting your internship from April, so this year we will be putting the internship interviews will start from February. By the time you come and the preparation already you are starting in Ghaziabad. So coming here you have to face the interview and that will start in the month of February. And here it starts with the career fair. The career fair is the starting phase or you can say zero day is the career fair where the first day of the interview happens. And then it continues. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, with that, uh, of course, uh, because I have not yet, uh, you know, uh, uh, before, uh, you know, I wrap up, I'll come back to the alums and, you know, just ask in case they have, uh, any one of you have, uh, you know, a point to be made, uh, you know, now you have heard what kind of queries they are having. So you have anything more to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, explain them because uh, I think, yeah, they have these typical, two, you know, two, three types of queries about the ads and about the placements. Any one of you would like to, you know, give a final bite to the upcoming batch? Hi, ma'am. Um, I yeah. think, I, think uh, I mean, I was just going through the questions. Well, a lot of questions around um, the program structure and, and how will it be going forward? Maybe what the five of us can probably do is just drop our LinkedIn, message, LinkedIn IDs here and they can sort of just message us one on one in case they need to. And we can take up whatever questions they might have that they might not have asked in this port right now. And we can probably uh, discuss it with them um, over LinkedIn or wherever. Sure, Mr. Siddharth, that, uh, you know, uh, the support, uh, I'm sure, yeah. I mean, that's the, uh, uh, you know, goodness of our alums, of course. You know, if it's all about, like Professor Patnaik also mentioned, if the candidates or the students are not lethargic, you know, the, you know there's no end to, you know, uh, how much support they can get. And I'm sure our, all our alums today here on the panel also would be more than willing to help out the candidates in case, uh, you know, they need any support. Uh, and of course, we are all there. Um, yeah, and with that, of course, uh, Mr. Uh, you know, Professor Ma Wahid, uh, because I couldn't get a chance uh, to come to you. So I would like to, uh, you know, like you to invite you to also, you know, uh, you know, say a few lines uh, regarding because you have understood the queries and would, would, would you like to say something? Thank you, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi. Uh, it's my pleasure to meet uh, prospective students and also my alumni. So uh, we used to have a kind of interaction during orientation programs. So Gayatri, last time she came for our orientation program and it was very nice to see Praveen also after a long time. So uh, it's very nice and uh, all the 
alumni they have given their uh, you know views on how was their experience it must be very much helpful to all the prospective students to take a call mm -hmm. so they have they have they seem to have some sort of concerns and worries I think, uh, many times it's like covid 19 is uh, you know, not a normal situation it is we are all not very sure of how things would uh, unfold it's very uncertain environment but if, given this uncertain environment we are able to come up with some sort of some plan which is what we'll plan right so that is good for the, all the students so i hope it would be very much the kind of plan that we have brought out would be very much helpful to the students prospective students should not have any worries uh, we are all here to support you right so our career services team both the career services team is they are very much geared up for the challenge right? it is a challenging uh, situation it is not a normal time it is very much challenging yeah, even yeah. in this challenging situation very much geared up very much enthusiastic to take up the challenge so, so i think uh, thank this, you this thank you sir oh, totally right? and, you know second your opinion i know this is challenging and it is problematic and there are a lot of questions and queries and concerns but the good thing is that everyone is on the same plane and and hence uh, you know that is uh, you know every day giving us so much of uh, courage and uh, you know support from all corners to you know take it any half forward and you know if there is a change we are also going to you know kind of adjust move forward so i think that's the only way and definitely we are already on it and we are going to do it further also with that uh, in case there are any queries uh, dear uh, candidates uh, because it is beyond time already in case there are any queries uh, uh, please feel free to write to us we'll be you know in case uh, we are not able to because of the paucity of time answer we'll be able to uh, answer it uh, um, you know offline uh, you can run to the admissions office and we'll be handling your queries i hope this is fine and uh, with that i would like to thank all my panelists uh, especially my uh, you know our alums uh, for giving their time and an effort and uh, and definitely our internal team members uh, and uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, you know for the webinar i i really like interacting with all of you with this i would be signing off uh, have a great weekend everyone